Hello friends, this is Navdeep Singh from hitbullseye.com. In our today's discussion, we will be discussing about the period of our Indian history starting from about 1940s till the point we gain our independence. So the topic of today's discussion would be firstly the August offer, Cripps mission, the Quit India movement, the cabinet mission and the Mount Betton plan. So starting with August offer. While discussing August offer and the subsequent events, we have to know that this is a period in which the World War II started. World War II started in periods of about 1939 and ended in the years of about 1945. So talking about the August offer, its main purpose was to see Indian cooperation in the war effort of the British. And Viceroy namely Viceroy Linlithgow. He forwarded the August offer to the Indian parties. The main proposals of August offer were dominion status as the objective for India, expansion of Viceroy's executive council, setting up of a constituent assembly after the war where mainly Indians would decide the constitution. We have to keep in mind that it is mainly and not solely Indian. No future constitution to be adopted without the consent of the minorities. The Congress on its behalf rejected the August offer. This was mainly because of the reason that August offer provided for provision of dominion status and not Purna Suraj or complete independence. While Saying that Congress rejected the August offer, Congress to put forward his dislike for the offer started the individual Satyagraha. Some pointers about individual Satyagraha. It was a movement which provided for a very limited kind of action against the government. Since the Congress also realized that they can't start a full-fledged opposition of the government since the British was already engaged in the war. During the individual Satyagraha, people or rather one or two people from each and every village would participate and they would demand for freedom of speech. The first individual Satyagrahi was Vinoba Bhave and the second was Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. The next point of today's discussion and the next highlight of Indian independence struggle was the Krebs mission. The reason was the same or cause was the same that of entertaining or rather including Indians into the war effort. And again, there was certain pressure on Britain from the allies, allies in the war, namely US, USSR, China to seek Indian cooperation. Talking a bit about the main proposals of the mission. Firstly, an Indian union with a dominion status would be set up, same as was that provided in the August offer. But the added point was it would be free to decide its relation with the Commonwealth countries and free to participate in other international associations such as the United Nations and other bodies. After the end of war, the British promised that a constituent assembly would frame a new constitution. Members of this assembly would be partly elected by provincial assemblies through proportional representation and partly nominated by the princes themselves. Here we have to keep in mind that while discussing August offer, the constitution making process would, was mainly by the Indians. Here in the Cripps mission, it was solely by the Indians. So that is a differentiating point between the two plans or two missions. The Cripps mission provided that the British government would accept the new constitution based upon two conditions. Firstly, a province not willing to join the union could have a separate constitution of its own and form a separate union. And secondly, a new constitution making body would be set up which would consist 
of solely the Indians. This is being differentiated from the August offer where a constitution making body was being set up mainly by the Indians. So mainly and solely is the differentiating point between the August offer and the Cripps mission. The Cripps mission also provided that defense of India would remain in British hands and governor general's power would remain intact. The Congress again being dissatisfied with provisions such as that of dominion status against what was being demanded by the Congress like complete independence or Purna Swaraj and hence as a result of that the Congress rejected the offer of Cripps mission. To show its rejection and to show its dissatisfaction with the Cripps mission the Congress started the Quit India movement. So coming to Quit India movement Firstly, discussing about the causes of Quit India movement. The first cause, as we've already discussed, that of failure of Cripps mission. Secondly, we have to again keep in mind here that this was a period of about 1940s to 1942. Again, the period in which the World War II was being fought. Because of that, or because of the World War II, there was a popular discontent because of rising prices and shortage of rice, salt and other commodities. And reasons such as commandeering of boats in Bengal, Odisha and other coastal areas. News of reverses suffered by the British in Southeast Asia and imminent British collapse. It was very popularly believed by Indians at that point in time, periods of about 1942, that the British Empire was on verge of being sinking or rather of being demolished in the World War II. And lastly, the manner in which Britishers evacuated themselves from Southeast Asia, leaving Indian subjects to their fate. What was happening at that point in time was that the Britishers had created a white road for themselves which was free to go around and for Indians they created a black road. The black road was very crowded and Indians could not evacuate themselves from the war town area whereas the Britishers evacuated themselves very easily from the war town or the battlefront areas. And hence this left the subjects or the Indian subjects to their fate. This was again leading to discontent among the Indian masses. Talking about the events of Quit India movement, we'll start with Gandhiji's instructions to the general public. Gandhiji had instructed various things to the sections of the public such as he instructed to the army people or to the soldiers or sepoys that do not leave the army but do not fire on their compatriots. He instructed to the students to leave governmental schools if they are confident in their studies. He instructed the peasants or people of princely states not to cooperate with the prince if he is cooperating or if the prince is hands in glove with the British. So to various sections of the people he had given certain instructions. Second was public rampage. In the Quit India movement the public rampage was to a very very high extent and this showed that there was some amount of violence in the quit India movement which was tolerated by Gandhiji. Otherwise Gandhiji was very very intolerant to any kind of violence that had happened in our history. While indulging into public rampage the general public or people took up looting the British godowns, taking off the telegraph lines destroying the railway lines and other means of communication. More important was underground activity and parallel governments. The Indians at that point in time started an underground activity. Underground activity shows that various personalities such as Usha Mehta had indulged into underground activities such as starting radio communications and providing instructions to the volunteers or to the public how to take care of Quit India movement and how to go forward in the Quit India movement. The parallel government is about
creating a parallel system of administration by the people themselves. Three new parallel governments were being set up in Balia, in Tamluk, and in Talche. This was in complete disobedience of the British rule in the country. And lastly, the government repression. In the Quit India movement, the government repression was to the highest extent. Around 10,000 people were killed and press was gagged to a very, very high extent. So this was about the Quit India movement. And sensing from the mood of Quit India movement, the government again took up the wishes or took up the demands of the people of India and sent a cabinet mission plan to India. The popular government in Britain at that point in time was at least government and the period we are talking about here is 1946. In that period in the cabinet mission plan which was a three member party consisting of firstly Patrick Lawrence, Stafford Cripps and A.V. Alexander. These all were part of the British cabinet at that point in time. Their purpose was to find out ways and means for negotiating a peaceful transfer of power in India. So with the coming of cabinet mission plan and with the coming of periods of about 1945-1946, it was understood in Britain that India or Indians would do nothing less than complete independence. The British and in their part could do only a good or a peaceful transmission or transfer of power to Indian. How to do that was to be suggested by the three member committee of the British cabinet. Talking about the features of cabinet mission plan. Firstly, it rejected the demand of a full fledged Pakistan or it outrightly rejected the two nation theory. It was because of three reasons mainly. Firstly, Pakistan so formed if the two nation theory is acceded to would include a large non-Muslim population, 38% in the northwestern parts of the country and 48% in the northeastern parts of the country. This seemed to be very, very unviable to create a new country itself. Secondly, division of armed forces on lines of religion would be very, very dangerous. And lastly, deep-seated regional ties between Bengal and other parts of the country and Punjab and other parts of the country would be disturbed if the partition were to take place. Now, discussing what the cabinet mission plan was or what the three-member committee had provided for. It provided for the country to be divided into three sections. Section A, Section B, Section C. This was based upon religion and geography. Section A in itself would be a Hindu majority province which would consist of Madras, Bombay, Central Provinces, United Provinces, Bihar and Odisha at that point in time. Section B would consist of Punjab, Northwest Frontier Province and Sindh, all the northwestern parts of the India of that times. And thirdly, Section C would consist of the eastern parts of country such as Bengal and Assam. A three-tier executive and legislature would be provided for, the three tiers being provincial, section and the union levels. This was about the cabinet mission plan. After the cabinet mission plan, the Congress as well as the Muslim League, the two major political parties of the time said that they accept the offer in a very, very limited manner. And as a result of the cabinet mission plan, an interim government was formed in the year 1946. The purpose of that interim government would be the framing of the constitution itself. Now it was very clear that India would have to be given complete independence. 
the Britishers would have to find ways how to give that complete independence in a peaceful manner. To provide for that independence or to provide for partition in a peaceful manner, the British Parliament withdrew the Lordship or Viceroy at that point in time who was Lord Wavell and brought in Lord Mountbatten as the Viceroy of the country. Lord Mountbatten's plan or purpose was single to provide for a peaceful transfer of power and to provide for two countries or creation of a new country itself. Mountbatten put forward a plan called Mountbatten Plan and it is also famously called as the 3rd June Plan 2. The main features of the plan are as such. To decide if there were to be two nations or to be a single nation, the Punjab and Bengal Legislative Assemblies would meet in two groups. The two groups being Hindus and Muslim members of the Legislative Assembly. If any of the groups decided for a separate country, that would be provided for. This was provided only in the cases of Punjab and Bengal Legislative Assemblies and no other Legislative Assembly because if there were to be a partition, it was only these two states or provinces which were affected. In case of partition or in case the two groups or rather any of the group would decide for a partition, two dominions and two constitution assemblies would be created, one for the administration of India and one for Pakistan. The question of Sindh. Sindh was provided that it would take its own decision if it wants to come into India, if it wants to come into Pakistan. A referendum would be held in the northwest frontier province and Sileth district of Bengal would decide the fate of these areas. It was also decided that freedom would come on August 15, 1947. Earlier, Atlee or Atlee's government had said that freedom to India would be given somewhere in 1948, but this date was advanced by Mountbatten's plan. If there was to be a partition, a boundary commission to, was to be set up to calculate or to judge the boundaries of the two dominions. Ultimately, a boundary commission was set up under the leadership of Cyril Radcliffe. And Cyril Radcliffe decided a line which would be henceforth called the international border between India and Pakistan. And hence, till date, the Indo-Pakistan border is popularly called as the Radcliffe Line. So, these are the major provisions of the Mountbatten Plan. And till now, we have discussed various issues today, ending with Mountbatten Plan, which further led to the independence of the country. Thank you.